All right, it's the end of the session. I'm here without Lovey. Lovey's over there, and Lovey is uh, just enjoying her little dog bed donut. And this is Lovey's road camp to success. Now, Lovey just moved here, and uh, she is a, a one-year-old dog that really spent the first part of her life in shelters, which is not a good environment for any dog, especially not a good environment for a young puppy. Puppies learn the first four months of their life is when they really develop their social skills and confidence. And the fourth month is a fear period. So if something bad happens in the fourth month, it really sticks with them. So to have a puppy that's in a shelter for the fourth month of their life, it's really not a good situation. Now, Lovey, um, I have not petted Lovey, but I did give her a lot of treats that she took from my hand, not a lot, but a number. And, but she, I think is comfortable with me because I was respectful of what she wanted and what she was able to do. A lot of us, we think I'm gonna pet the dog to make friends with the dog. But if the dog doesn't like you or doesn't feel comfortable and you are petting them, that can make them feel cornered and actually be an unwanted interaction. So um, when you have friends come over, I would just have your friends just be like, hey, we're gonna be very, we're gonna ignore her lovey. Um, and if she comes up to you, don't pet her, don't move. Just be passive and sit there, let her sniff you. Now, if you do, you can give your friends uh, like a little mini treat pouch like this and have the treats that she's like cut up. And then you can kind of, uh, lovey. Lovey. So we could kind of throw the treats. So lovey. So she can't interact with me. Will you take that treat? Yeah, you take that one. And so she came over and she got the treat and she's going back to her dog bed. A lot of us think the dog gets the treat and we want to pet them. So you can have a friend come over and just toss treats. Now, a lot of times we're predisposed to toss the treats in between us to get the dog closer. But if the dog gets stiff or fearful, or especially if he growls or barks, throw the treat behind the dog. When the dog growls or barks, it's trying to increase the distance. And so if we throw the treat behind the dog, that move, the dog moves away and that's what the dog wanted is to increase the distance. How about this one? You want one of this one or are you gonna turn your nose up on this one? Oh, you'll take that one now. This is little Luffy. Sit. So I'm not repeating the word over and over because if I do that, I'm gonna, yes. Now she did get out of a sit there, but if I repeat a word that I'm not, the more I say it, the less I mean it. So I was trying to use a lure. I'm touching the treat in front of her nose and you see how her, her back legs are back there? So that's what I call stealing seconds. She doesn't feel comfortable enough to do it. Normally I would kind of rotate the treat up in a croissant shape and as soon as her butt hits the ground, say yes and release that treat. But I'm not gonna say sit, sit, sit because she's not comfortable enough sitting. Uh, or, or she doesn't know how to sit. She knows how to sit, but if I force a dog to sit, I might be successful, but then if they feel uncomfortable, then they might feel trapped. So what I can do is I can offer my hand there. You see, she came over, she licked it, and then she said, that's all I wanted. She moved away. My hand didn't go any closer. And because of that, she'll come closer to me, where normally for people to come over, I'm guessing she doesn't come and interact with them like this or guardian shaking, no. And so um, when you have friends come over, curate the experience. Remember exercise her first, make sure she gets uh, sleep before, an hour or so before, then you go for maybe a little five minute walk out in the street, and then you come back in here, give her 10 minutes of rest, and then when you meet people, it would be nice if you could meet them outside. Inside your house, this can become territorial as well, and there's only one escape route, and so everything's confined, I'm focused on you. If we're outside, there's other dogs walking by, there's cars, there's birds, there's smells, there's a lot of open space, so I feel more comfortable. Now the ideal situate place to meet would be north of Montana, like from 5th to 27th Street, just in those neighborhoods. That's a nice, and I'd like you guys to get in a habit of walking in that neighborhood. Just pick a block and walk 3rd, 4th, 5th, and you'll find some areas that you like. But that's a nice, easy place for her to walk. It's a lot of open space. And then you have your friend meet you there. Parking is actually not restricted there like it is here. And so the friend parks there, and then you just happened upon meeting your friend there. Now, what I like to do is I like to have the friend meet while they're sitting down. I like the dog approaching from the five o'clock or the seven o'clock angle from behind. Front facing is confrontational, leaning over is dominating. So if I'm sitting on the curb and you're walking down the sidewalk here and you walk up towards me, and as a, as a human, I can hold a tree out to the side like this. Dog, if she licks it off my hand, great. If she doesn't, I might say, find it, or I might just drop it on the ground. And sometimes I will have the person leave a couple treats, a tree trail, so as the dog gets closer, and sometimes there's like one treat, two treats, three treats, four treats, five treats. So the closer the dog gets to you, the more reward and, uh, that the dog gets. And the dog only gets to the third row, that's okay. Then you're gonna just notice, okay, the lovey wants at least a foot and a half space. 
and that person is going to be passive. So, and then you, and then uh, call lovey away, give her some treats, do a couple findings in the grass while your friend stands up, and then you walk back to your home. So now lovey met them outside, I got some treats, I met in a nice pleasant place that I've gone to many times before, I got a bunch of treats, and then we walked back home, and then we came into the house, so you establish a rapport in an easier setting, and then move up here. And then when you're up here, again, if lovey's uncomfortable, tell them not, no eye contact, don't try to lean towards Lovey. As Lovey comes over and sniffs you, just hold still and let her walk away. And then eventually you can offer treats. And I'm thinking that hopefully she will start feeling more and more comfortable, but it might be two or three visits before she feels more comfortable with that person. She's very, she's exploring her new surroundings now, which I love. Um, okay, now, um, before I get into summarizing all the things, I did talk to the guardian about possibly putting her on some Prozac. And right there, her guardian just reached over to pet her and she twitched a little bit. That's an illustration of cortisol in the blood. It can take up to three days for a dog to filter the cortisol into their blood. It gives them that heightened sense, but that's um, not healthy for us to be in that heightened sense for too long. It activates their adrenal gland and everything else. And it's kind of that adage, you know, a candle that burns twice as fast burns half as long. And so we want her to be able to settle down and uh, floxetine, the doggy Prozac, is often very effective in lowering or dimming the anxiety level of dogs. So she's trying to get the treats, now we'll see what's going on. And so um, basically, uh, I would talk to your vet about that and uh, uh, talk to your, you know, most vets are pretty open to prescribing that. And then the idea is get her on that so that uh, it takes about four to six weeks. Hopefully she does not feel so stressed and triggered. Um, so, um, and there we go, now she's gonna, you know, so she did. So why don't we, while we're doing this, why don't you grab a pinch of the, of the dust that we did. Um, it's, now the dust is Stewart's freeze-dried beef liver. They have big bundles, I get the giant one because I work with a lot of dogs, you can probably get the smaller one. And then just, you can push one down and just push it down with your thumb into it until it's a dust, or you get a coffee grinder and sprinkle it, and so she's sprinkling it in there with the food, because right now Lovey doesn't eat a lot. So uh, now she's sprinkling it, and we'll see if Lovey starts eating her food. And she is. Okay, so that's a topper. I don't like to do a too much topping. Uh, and Lovey is being a shelter dog, taking a kennel, walking away, going back. And that's nothing wrong with that. It's just kind of, I'm going to eat at a place I feel more comfortable, or I feel another dog's going to try to take my food. But hopefully she'll go back there. Now, for the food feeding, what I would do is... Um, Put the topper on there and feed small portions so that, you know, maybe twice a day so she's eating and cleaning her plate. You could also try the warm food and you could also get like, um, like a beef bouillon or chicken bouillon or like bone broth. And I've seen some people take an ice cream tray and uh, or ice cube tray and put the bouillon in there and then pop one out and then microwave it in with the food so that has the chicken or the beef bouillon. The warm temperature also makes the food a little bit more appealing. Now, after you do this, hey buddy, and again, I really want to pet her, but it's not about me. It's about what she feels. And because I'm not petting her, she feels comfortable enough to do that. Where normally a person, she would, I want to go smell the door, but I'm not going to do that because I'm worried the person's going to grab me. Um, so that bouillon can really help. She's going back to her food. She likes that topper. So um, we want to get to the point where when we put the food down, she's going to eat all of her food. And, her, and if she eat, takes a bite and walks away and eats, and as long as she's doing that actively, that's fine. When she kind of walks away and she stops going in there, that's when I would dump the bowl empty and put the empty bowl back down. So she's recognized that that food is gone. Every time she drinks water, she'll probably lick the bowl and check, is it there? And after about a week or so, then when the food appears, she's more interested in getting it because it's a rare exception. It's not ethical to withhold food from your dogs, but creating a situation where you eat it on a regular basis is healthier for some dogs, unless they have dietary issues, which she doesn't have. Um, now, eventually, we get to the point where you can put the food down, and she goes over and she eats all of it, even if she walks back and forth, but eats it pretty much in one incident. Uh, then you can might uh, get a small snuffle mat. Now, the one that I like is the Runda. Now, that was the big one, but they have a smaller one. And again, put the uh, kibble in there, and you could also put some of that dust in there as well on the kibble. And uh, But the idea is we shouldn't need the dust once we get in a habit of doing it. Then we put it in the Runda, now she's earning her food. Then you get the, one of those Omega Paw Tricky Trainer Treat Balls, probably a small or a medium for her, and put her kibble in there. She's nudging this thing around. The first couple times, like I said, you'll have to nudge it like I showed you in that video. But eventually she feels good and she'll like be bouncing around and nudging that thing off the walls and having a good time doing that and give that boost of confidence and getting exercise while she's eating. And you can also use that for like, when you have a meeting or something like that, have pull one of those out. Now, um, you can also get her the, uh, the lick mat, get her used to licking some peanut butter off it. It sounds really gross to me, but you could also put some of that dust on top of the peanut butter if she doesn't like it. Most dogs like peanut butter. Licking and chewing release endorphins. 
So if we can get her licking uh, lick mats, especially when guests come over. So you can put the lick mat far away so she can lick that while the guest is present and now it's releasing those feel good endorphins into her brain. Uh, but just make sure she's had it a couple times before the guests come over, otherwise it, oh, you kind of tricked me with the guest. Eventually you can freeze it and it'll last a little bit longer. I'd also like you to get some edibles for her. So you can get like um, uh, bully bites. Uh, I like you know, the odor free ones. The one I get from is best, bestbully.com. Look for the odor free bully bites and it'll be like an eight ounce bag probably last you a couple months. Um, you can also get her the oxtail that you got her. She doesn't seem to really like as much because she can't really chew on her. I have gully stick uh, that you can also get from uh, Best Bully. I think the ones I offer from Bark were the same company. Um, but gully, gullet sticks for her were good. Um, you can also get uh, a cow ear. Oh, she went all the way around behind the boxes. I don't know how she got over there. Um, and she appeared way over there. Uh, but you can also get cow's ears. There's no hides. Uh, there's cod skin, uh, salmon skin. For a small dog like her, those are good things for her. Uh, and so getting her some edible things and some stuff she can lick and chew are going to be helpful for her, especially when guests come over. We also talked about, uh, so we started off moving over the marker word. By the time you watch this video, you should have already loaded this, but walk around the house. Yes, treat. Yes, for about 12 treats. Then about 15 minutes later, do that again with the clicker, but be careful you don't hold the clicker next to her ear. As long as that's sours and dogs get spooked for that. And eventually you get to the point she's going, she's exploring behind everything now. Um, but eventually when you say yes or click, she should look up and be kind of happy. That's when you're done. So you only have to do that about six times with each one. She'll be done over one or two days, then you're done with that. Then now you can start using yes, like she just sat down. And when her butt hits the ground, you say yes or click. Now outside, she didn't want to listen. Now she was probably a little overwhelmed, but she's distracted. When I've been in the hospital, the, doctor, the nurse I was like, oh, you work with dogs. What kind of dogs do you work with? What kind of dogs are difficult? What kind of dogs do you have? What is the nurse trying to get me to do? Not think about whatever my injury is. So if you can get her focused on something she knows how to do, that can really help. I do something called training for attention. So I, well, I use a clicker for this because I'm doing a lot of clicking. So sit, but it's around, click, treat. Take a couple steps away, sit, click, treat. And then eventually do it right in your hallway. Eventually you're doing it all the way down into the elevator, down the stairs, and then you're doing it in the lobby. But when you get to the point where you say sit and she can't do it, then you're saying, I've reached the limit of where I can focus and concentrate. So then I would back up a couple of steps, maybe go back in the building and practice a little bit there. Then I ebb and flow like the ocean. So do a right at the door, sit, click, treat, go out the door, sit, click, treat, walk back inside, sit, and gradually you can start doing further and further. But the click helps the dog know what you're doing. And eventually it's like, you're a doggy slot machine. You're paying off. So I'm not going to run away from you. And I'm focused on you instead of what else is going on. Now the find it is also a great thing to do in your house so that she's comfortable and then you can do that on the street. I often do something called a find it away. So let's say that she sees another dog, she's staring at the other dog, she's like, I'm gonna wait till you come here and I bark at you like crazy. So you take the uh, treat and you've done this in the house. So you touch her nose and drop one here. She looks it up and say yes, then I throw another one one foot away. She takes a step over, when she looks up, yes. And then I throw one two feet away, yes. And then I will throw one four feet away. I just moved her seven feet away by having her practice this. Now you practice it in your house, then outside your door, then the lobby, and then you do it outside on walks when there's nobody around. So that way I'm used to doing this. So when you're saying, well, let's play the find a game, she's like, great. And she doesn't even see the dog or the person approaching that she normally is reactive to. Um, okay, so we talked about, um, um, let me see, uh, making a list of cues and trying to be consistent and say just the one word, not good sit, just sit. Um, also, um, try to, uh, you say the marker word the instant she does the thing that you want, unless it has duration like potty, then you say at the end or click at the end. And then give her the treat afterwards. Now, if she's outside like she was and she was too aroused to take the treat, yes, and just pet her, scratch her chest or her butt or whatever it is. We want to make sure we provide a reinforcement. Treats are better, but if she's too overwhelmed, she won't take the treat, we can physically give her that interaction. Now, if she ever wants to move away from people, we're gonna let her do that. We actually wanna reward her for doing that. So if she sees somebody and she doesn't like them, she walks away, yes. Remember when she shakes it off, that's a way of relieving tension, yes as well. Watch her lips, because she's a lick lick where a lot of dogs will lick lips when they're un uncomfortable. Watch the other dogs. So we saw a couple other dogs walking out. One of them, the lab, unfortunately had a prong collar on. I usually don't let my dogs interact with dogs with prong collars because that creates a negative association and I found that sometimes those dogs are kind of grumpy. I would be too if I had the punch and base tool on me all the time I'm outside. So uh, not that they can't be good dogs. It's a good dog, it's just a bad tool. Um, all right, we also talked about um, teaching the dogs manners. So when she comes up and kind of paws or barks or nudges for attention, she's saying, give me some attention, darn it. 
Now she's cute, and if we can do that, but we're also kind of training her that she can kind of tell me what to do. And also that, that kind of being abrupt or maybe perhaps a little bit rude works. Santa Monica, we want to be nice and, uh, and there you go, she's got a toy, she feels very happy. She's, now she's playing around with it. Um, so basically she nudges you, we're gonna give her that do-over. So she nudges you, give me some attention. And you're gonna say sit. If she sits within two seconds, and the first time you say it, you say yes, and scratch her under her chin or on her chest or on her shoulders. If she doesn't sit, just go back to your email, singing a song, whatever you were doing before. She's the one who's missing out. We're not gonna punish her or say you're missing out. She's missing out by default. And after a while, she'll start figuring this out. She'll start sitting in front of you to prepay. When she does, say yes and pet her. It's gonna be hard because you're single. You don't have somebody else telling you. Usually we say manners to each other. Oh, that means I'm, I, I shouldn't be petting the dog because it's jumping up on me because we're mi not mindful of what we're doing. And is it wrong to pet a dog? Really never. But if the dog does something you don't want and you pet it, you are reinforcing what you don't want. Now, the uh, flip side of that is what I call celebrating, which is rewarding the dog when it does the thing that you want without you asking. So the example I used was teaching the dog to drink and say happy hour when your dog drinks water. So every time you see that she's, she, you hear her drinking water, when she gets done, say yes and pet her, or give her a treat. And after a while, when you watch her walking to the bowl, then we can say the cue. The cue shouldn't come unless we're 90% certain we say the cue to do the action. We know she's walking to get that water because there's no food in the bowl. Happy hour. Lap, 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 yes, and then I give a little pet and attention. And after enough repetition, say happy hour, she'll go drink water to get that attention from you. She's chewing on, I think, like a coffee cup from Starbucks thing. White Claw. Oh, uh, the White Claw, there we go. So she's, she's, it's Friday night, she wants to get her swerve on. So every time she does that, you might say, you know, uh, bartender, and then she goes and gets that. And uh, so that would be a funny thing. Remember, funny cues cause dogs to, they can read facial expression. And she's already a little bit nervous. So if you have these funny cues, you say bartender, and she runs over there and grabs that and brings that to your friend, that's gonna make your friend laugh, and that makes her feel good that I entertain my friend. So the way I would do that is every time she's about to grab that particular toy, and I say bartender, she grabs it, and then, you know, yes, and you can play a little tug of war with her. Um, but, and, and now every time she has a toy, it doesn't necessarily always mean she wants you to play tug. Like if I have a new car, sometimes I just want to drive it up and down my street so my neighbors see that I have a new car. I don't want them to drive my new car. So for her, now she comes over and brings it to you and shakes it in your face. She might be wanting to play tug of war like she is now. Uh, but a lot of people are like, oh, you brought it to me? You want me to take it from you? No, I just want you to see my loot, man. I want you to be jealous of what I got. So come up with funny names for all of your toys, and that way you can tell her what to do, and that's, again, cultivating her uh, intellect, helping her have a stronger uh, uh, communication method with you, and you can kind of tell her to do certain things. Same thing with the dog bed. If you want to teach her to go to this dog bed, the furry one we're gonna call Chicago, show her you have a treat, put that light-colored towel in it so that it's easier for her to get it. Say Chicago, and then throw the treat. When she jumps on it, say yes or click, and then she looks up the treat, wait for her to vacate, and do it again. And I would name each individual dog bed, so that way you can say Chicago, Hotlanta, and Disneyland, or whatever you want to name your other dog beds. Um, you can look at the same thing. Maybe you call that, you know, a part of Chicago or something like that, or Hilton or Hawaii. Um, and so that way you can say, I want you to Hilton, I want you to go to your dog uh, in a kennel, I want you to Chicago dog bed, and you can have her going from place to place. Those are actually nice activities for guests to do with her, because she doesn't have to tactile contact with the guests. Um, she's got her one of her bully sticks now, or her, her belly sticks. I'm gonna go in the bedroom and chew this thing. So your guest can go over and say, Chicago, drop it in. She jumps in there. She's listening to your guest. She's being rewarded for listening to your guest, but she can do it without physically touching your guest. And then it's kind of like, I'm, I'm known as Funkle for, for a couple of friends of mine and kids. I'm the fun Uncle Dave. And so, uh, or fake Uncle Dave, depending on which one you ask. But so when I come over, I bring gifts, you know, I take them out to movies or we do fun stuff. So I'm the fun uncle. And so they like it when I'm around. And so the dog, after a while, when guests come over, they're throwing treats around. We meet them outside on a walk and get all these fun treats. They don't try to pet me. And eventually one day that she'll just jump right in their lap. And then at that point they can try to pet. But remember, anytime she like wants to get away, let her get away. And if she uh, turns her head or licks her lips, Tell them to stop interacting with her unless they're, you know, she's in her lap and she can leave on her own. Um, also, just a little note, uh, because she's a little dog and you have um, you know nice flooring here, make sure you have a couple uh, uh, rugs down. Yeah, so she has soft places yeah. and she can lay down. Okay, um, so, uh, so manners is if you, she's demanding attention from you, you're going to redirect her to sit if she sits or down. And if she does that, then you're going to say yes and pet her. And she knows she sit, but she doesn't know down. 
So every time you're watching TV, she comes over and lays down, yes, and pet her. And when she recognizes she's about to do it, you can say yes, or uh, crash, or chill, or whatever the word is you want to say. So you say chill, and she flops down, yes, and you pet her. Now a little trick that we do in puppy class, we put them in a sit, and then we try to take the treat. And I call this the rubber band technique. So here's the dog, dog's jaws, here's the treat. If I go like this, and the dog doesn't track it, the rubber band pulls it back. So you always want to keep that treat within an inch of her nose. So I try to lure her down, and sometimes I'll shape it. So she goes down a little bit, and I say yes, you give her a treat, and I, then I, I give her get to this point, and then eventually to this point, and then this point, and eventually she'll lay down. But every time she lays down her own, I say your mark word and reward her. Now also, the other trick that I do is I'll hold, I'll kind of do it like this. I'll have my leg here, she's over here, take a treat, and I go through here, and I lure her down. The only way she can get it is by being on her belly. As soon as she hits her belly, I say yes and release that treat. So that's more of a lure, but the easiest way to do it is just celebrate every time she lays down. But do that for eye contact. When you're walking with her, she looks at you, have your treat pouch, yes, and give her that treat. And again, that click exercise that I talked about before will help. Now, when I'm out and about, I prefer using the click because that's a little bit more specific. It's a more unique sound, and she'll really dial into that. Um, let me see. So uh, we also talked, uh, so celebrating eye contact, sits, downs, going to your dog bed, drinking water, eating your food. Come up with your favorite meal. Uh, Dia, what did you say, Dia? Okay, so yes. Dilla. Dilla. Uh, so uh, I was using Spanish. Yeah. Dilla, and she, and she goes and eats her food. Now, but if you know she's not going to eat her food, wait until you know she's going to do that. And Dilla, and then she goes and eats her food. Again, it's a funny little cue. Um, let me see. What else? Um, what else do we talk about? Um, the approaching. But that well, that, we have the video for that one. Okay, yeah. Right. Um, but um, when you're out on the walks, again, be aware of your environment. If you're walking and there's some shrubberies on this side and there's a van parked, that comes, becomes a choke point. So if you see somebody coming walking to the dog, just walk off the side, do some find it's and some grass, get her distracted, let the other dog or the person pass, but also keep track of the people that she's reactive to. So we saw um, one of the neighbor's boyfriends came up and he's kind of a big guy and he's muscular and he had tattoos. So take mental note of what the guy looked like. Maybe you notice, you know what? Big A's got a deep voice. Well, then we can recreate that, find somebody has a deep voice and then help her practice that. Like the door exercise. So if I, so she's the guard dog, she's gonna protect. Yes, oh yes, I know. And so again, she said, I don't want it. So the sound of the, the there's a, there's a uh, garbage chute right across the hall. When she hears that, she gets worked up as well. So what you can do is take your phone and record the garbage chute and then play it at volume like one, very light. And if she barks, don't give her, don't say mark her word or give her a treat. So that means you'll play a little bit lower, or if you're all one, move it further away. So make it less intense. Then you play it, she hears the garbage thing open and whoosh, and then you give her a treat. And do that four or five times at level one. Then you label level two. And this might take several practice sessions, but eventually she hears the garbage chute and she's like, you know you owe me a treat, right? And but that's good. Now we make that in a positive. So the knock at the door, if I knocked that really loud, she raced over and heard it, that's her being reactive. So what I do instead is just, and then give her a treat, and then give her a treat, and then knock a little bit louder, a little bit, but these are all singles. Eventually, I guess I'm like I'm the police with a single knock, really loud. But then I would go to, and then a treat, treat, treat. And so we're doing this when nobody's at the door. But if the door belt knocks and then somebody comes inside, then that reinforces and I get all worked up, I hear that. So we're just counter desensitizing and counter conditioning her. So eventually somebody knocks at the door and same principle, I deserve a treat. Um, now you can also teach her a knock means go to her dog bed that's a little bit more complicated. We celebrate. Yes. Perfect. Guardian's doing a great yes. job. So yeah, so remember to pet her under her chin. Oh, look at her, she's oh, feeling so good getting under her chin. Under the chin on the chest or the shoulders. Now if you do, um, there are places that you like to take her that she's not comfortable with, get that little dog bed. It's a kennel bed liner. Get the smallest one you can, it's terry cloth. You can fold it up, put it in your purse, make it look like a yoga roll. And then uh, basically go to those restaurants at times when it's very slow. You're not a famous actor like I talked about, but you could probably find a time when there's nobody really in there. Go in there, read a book a little bit. If you're sitting, she's gonna be a little bit more relaxed. And you can give her one of those gullet sticks or something like that, bully stick, and she's in there, bully bit, and she's in there chewing, and she's practicing being in that environment where it's nice and relaxed. The waiter rolls up, 
start just giving her treats. While the, and you can just keep her giving her the treats the whole time while the waiter is just shuffling stuff back and forth. We want to give the treats so fast we're preventing her from doing uh, barking at the waiter. But eventually, maybe it's once every one second. But eventually, it's like treat one two second treat the one two second. Then eventually, it's treat five seconds, and she's like looking at waiting for the one two three four five treat. She's not paying attention to what's going on. Eventually, you get to 15, 20, 30 seconds. But if you go from 20 to 30, you get to 28, and she starts barking back up to 25. Always go to an easier level. Fundamentally, really think about how can I set her up for success? Can I get her some exercise? Can I choose the environment? Um, can I choose the time of day? Can I choose my helper? So that I'm doing all the things that I can to make it easier for her to perform. When she can perform on the easiest level, then raise it up a little bit. Maybe increase the speed, turn up the volume, or, or have more people there, or whatever it is, and gradually work her way up until she's comfortable doing whatever the thing is and she's gonna be better prepared for it. Don't forget to delete your photos out of your recently folder, uh, a deleted folder album so that your camera doesn't stop filming. Okay, so basically that's the, kind of the end. Of, this is a little lovey. And so um, if you have questions, please message me. If I don't hear from you, I assume in our society, we complain when we have a problem. When the things are going great, we don't really say anything. I love to get updates like, hey, she's friends with the waiter. Uh, now, in some places, if you go to like a Starbucks, you might be able to give the person treats and they can walk up and give them. But like that video, I said, I just would rather have you give me the treats at first because your timing's gonna be better and she's more comfortable. But eventually the person walks up, gives her a treat and walks away. Get that guy to come back here some more. Can we sit? Just on it. This is the good stuff. Yes. Um, so try to recreate situations to help her practice that. Now, uh, let me know if you have questions or if you want to set up a follow-up session to work on any stuff. If we do, uh, I'd write, like her to have like at least four weeks so the uh, floxetine kicks in and then we can start building on it. But she's a great little dog and I think as she gets a little bit more settled in, uh, it's going to make her feel more comfortable and all the tips that we covered should make her feel more comfortable as well. All right, well, this is my little buddy, uh, Lovey. Sit. That's not a sit. <laughs> Sit. Yes. This is Lovey, and this is Lovey's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it. <laughs>